What is up with Kyler Murray? Well, two right things. Now. I think the one is like that. I, I think players are going to be less afraid to push their way out. If and I'm not saying Kyler is, but I think that that's one thing that's like very clear now, and we've seen that. And there are different ways to do it. Like the two guys in the Rams, Jalen Ramsey and Matthew Stafford, went about it very different ways. Correct. But they both got out, right? Mm -hmm. And so, like, I think that that exists. Like, the guys view that as a viable option, even if you're the quarterback, because it used to be sacrilege for a quarterback to do that. Um, the second thing is the way the season ended, I think, left a mark there. And I can tell you, like, things were very uncomfortable in that building that week. The next day, they had the sort of personnel meeting that every team has at the end of the year. Leading, pardon me, leading up to the playoff game? After the playoff game. The, okay. week, the days after the playoff game. So the day after the season ended, they had a personnel meeting where, you know, all the coaches, the, every team does this, coaches, scouts come in yeah. and they all talk about like, okay, like here's what we're going to do here and here and here to set up the off season. That was abruptly canceled for a couple days after that. No one got word on what was going to happen with Cliff. It was just a lot of people were left like hanging in the balance. Kyler's very close with Cliff, of course. And you sort of wonder if Kyler sees this as, oh my God, are we going into a situation where the organization could be destabilized after this year by you know, firing the coach. Yeah. Or and because, because, because of the way the season ended and because things were so uncomfortable there, I know for some people in that building, I don't know about Kyler specifically, but there were some people that walked away from that thinking like, what's the owner going to do next? Okay. You know? And again, like it, it may be that Cliff Kingsbury, who I think has done a good job there on balance for the first three years, took over one of the worst rosters in football. They're in the playoffs three years later. He did a good job getting them there. I just feel like there was a little une uneasiness throughout that organization in the days after the season. I think that left a mark with some people. And so you do wonder, Kyler's at this point in his career now, he's played three years, he's eligible for a new contract, and you go down the list of guys who got paid after three years, most of the big ones did. Josh Allen did, um, Deshaun Watson did, Patrick Mahomes did, Carson Wentz did, Jared Goff did. Are they going to pay him this offseason? And you saw, like, the... Browns chose not to do that with Baker right. after last year, right? Mm -hmm. How awkward was it this year? Pretty awkward, right? <laughs> like, seems like it. Yeah. I mean, it it certainly seems like it. So, all right. So, you're saying that the way that things were maybe up in the air in regards to Kingsbury and Kyler's a Kingsbury guy. Yeah. And so well, he, he's thinking like, what, if they're going to fire the coach, I want to get paid. It's just, so is it about like, money I, I, or is it about? I, I think it's, I, I think it like, and this is again, this is me speculating, putting pieces together. But like, I, I like, I just think that there's enough there mm -hmm. where like there was enough going on with it, being eligible for a contract. The fact that his, you know, the coach who brought him in, I don't know if they take Kyler Murray first overall if Cliff, Cliff Kingsbury's not the coach. I think you'd agree with that. Like that probably does, that might not happen mm -hmm. because they just taken Josh Rose in the year before. I think it's like all these things play into it. Kyler can be a little up and down too. Like he can be a little moody too. So like I, I certainly think that there's some stuff that they're at the very least, there's gonna be some stuff they're gonna have to work out with Kyler. And don't forget, like, I'm not saying it's gonna happen. But Kyler also has an escape hatch. A lot of other people don't have. Well, NFL. not not until you know, uh, unless he wants to play in Japan. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> I guess, right? Uh, yeah, honestly, yeah, like right yeah. now, this looks horrible. What's yeah. going on? But they're already, yeah. you know, uh, the, the last time the owners called for, and you remember standing on a street corner yeah. for all those years during the NFL lockout. Yep. I was in studio. You were on a street corner in Washington D.C. Yep. We're talking to each other all the time. When when uh, owners call up and say we want a, a federal mediator yeah that's bad that's, bad you're hitting, news. The, you're hitting the nuclear button yeah so yeah. that's where things are right there so i i just why why in all the speculation that we're talking about does kyler make it public like what's the point of that what's the point that's of, the way like i, I like I, I think that's the way that guys like i I don't really relate with that as much, but I think that's the way the generation does it. Like, you know, it's like... Just let everyone know I'm pissed. So I guess what? If like, I leave, like, don't like, blame like, me. Like, I mean, like, what is that? It's like ghosting a girl, right? Like, it's like, I'm going to go think about this. So I'm just not going to talk to her for a few days, I guess. <laughs> I mean, I I don't think it's anything... Wow. Like, By the way, great for you, man. I was on the business end of that ghosting many times. <laughs> <laughs> it's an interesting way you phrase it. I don't phrase it differently. <laughs> but. I, I like... But I, but I do think, like... The amount of effort it takes to do something like that, there's something to do there. that. I, honestly, like, go ahead and do it. And well, you know what it's going to look like. Go ahead and do it. And, you know, our, our right. friend Ian Rappaport spoke to his agent. He's like, no comment. Right. So what's the comment? Which is an easy chance. I mean, like, remember. Well, we're gonna, and we're remember, just, like, what is it? Yeah. I mean, like, and what Ian said, like, I don't know if he pointed this part out, but that agent who represents Kyler uh -huh. also represents Cliff. So 
I mean, he'd have both ends of it. But you got to know that the no comment just keeps this. Well, that, that, that's perfect. That's, that's exactly it. Like that's, that, that's what I'm saying. Like, like so, you, we we fill the vacuum in a conversation yeah. on during Super Bowl week. Right. I mean, you know what's going on, right? Yeah. And that 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 people are going to talk about it. And what's the point of that? Like, who are you putting the pressure on? Like, what oh, we he, he's let it be known he's unhappy with us. We have to give him a contract that starts with a four right now. When you know, honestly. This thing has not finished up past Thanksgiving very well right. every year that this combination has been working together. And this team well, no showed in the building of the Super Bowl. I was there that night. It wasn't even close. That thing was Kyler a didn't rat. play well either. It was well, I mean, there was one play where he was remarkable in escaping yeah. uh, the the marauding defensive line yeah. at him, and he made some throw on the run that almost hit, I forget which receiver, I think it was Christian Kirk streaming down the field, Yeah, almost hit him on the run, and if he'd hit him right there, that was a touchdown, and things mm -hmm. might have been different, maybe, but other than that, so, I mean, what if you're management, what do you, what do you do? Like, I mean, well, and, and, and that's a hard thing, to too. Just restore his Instagram account and our relationship? Well, let's say, let's say that, let's say that, uh, that they, like, are thinking about this being Cliff's last year, and they don't extend the Cliff because Cliff, you know, is going into the fourth year of his contract, too. They haven't renewed him either. And you remember there was the brief flirtation with the Oklahoma job. Right. Like, if they're not extending Cliff, and they're going into the, uh, to the season thinking to themselves, we may not have, we, we may not, like, have Cliff Kingsbury pass this year. It's, like, tough to pay Kyler then, isn't it? Because if you pay Kyler now... Then whoever the next coach coming in, like whoever that is, is going to be saddled with Kyler's contract. I don't know. Maybe saddled. Saddled's the wrong word, but well, you know certainly what I mean? it's but saddled just, if he's not that good. He's a I unique mean, he's, type of quarterback, no question. Though, who I don't think fits for everybody. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like yes. so, like I think if you like, part of it is like like if there are eight or nine openings again next year, and you're the Cardinals and you want to attract the very best coach. Like the best situation is yes to give him Kyler Murray, but give him Kyler Murray with some options. Like give him Kyler Murray and say well, we haven't paid him yet, so we got to work through that. If you really like him, great. If not, like maybe we go with go into the fifth year option with him rather than like every coach who comes in has to be married, not dating, because if you pay him that much, married to Kyler Murray, and that I, I think that that's a factor too. Because like I'm, when Kyler came into the league, it was very specific, like. Mm -hmm. This guy's going first overall because he's Cliff Kingsbury's type of quarterback. Are you guaranteed that the next guy who you might like out there is going to feel the same way about him? Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.